Hello, how are you going? Skyplot here. Welcome, guys. As you can see, I have got uh, yeah, something from Beta FPV on the workbench here. If you've been keeping an eye on my channel recently, you will have seen I've got a fair bit of ELRS nano and micro receivers, etc., doing a lot of flying and playing around with some Beta FPV ELRS equipment. Which brings me to what we are doing here today. This is the ELRS module for our Radio Master TX16. This is Beta FPV's uh, original version. This is a 500 milliwatt. I've done a couple of reviews on this, so if you want to know all about this unit here, if you have just purchased one, then check out the video up on the screen there. But that's not what we're doing here today. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new revised updated version of the TX module here from Beta FPV. This is the ELRS 2.4 gig and it is sporting one watt of power plus some handy little upgrades. Welcome to my channel. Let's kick on in the box and see what you get. Okay, so within your kit you may or may not get uh, yeah, some pretty cool Beta FPV stickers. USB-C cable or Moxon antenna 2.4 gig which is why it's nice and small and you get a standard dipole antenna should you wish to use that as well and not to mention the Micro TX module fairly informative nice and easy to read uh, this menu is also available as a PDF online as you can see folks these are pretty much identical in size not much has changed here at all you can see it has a backpack feature on the rear here we have seven switches on the back here and you are going to need to adjust those for general use of the module and also for updating the firmware now i am running the latest version on this which is version 2.2.0 so i'll show you guys how to flash that on the pc to that version it's not the beta fpv version it's the official release the elaris github uh, official version so that means your OLED screen that has down here has uh, slightly different functions for the five-way switch and the screen looks a bit different than the original which I'll show you guys shortly same XT30 same USB-C but you can see the cable that came with the one watt version is a nice slim cable because if you guys remember that a lot of people were complaining that they couldn't get their USB-C in the rear of the 500 milliwatt version the cable they supplied actually goes straight into there which <laughs> would have saved a lot of people complaining but anyway they've fixed that with the new version and they've put a nice large hole there so any USB-C is going to go in there without any hassle but it doesn't really matter because they've included a cable with it so that's cool let's quickly open her up and have a look inside and see how things are set up Inside we can see the little transparent fan there that, that allows for the light to come through to the rear here. A couple of connectors. There's the heat shrink there for the processor which is on the other side of the main board there. So they've got the fan directly opposite that to push all of the hot air out. The insides in a nutshell. Now the original 500 milliwatt one had the strange push button configuration menu which is a bit funny but this is running as i said version 2.2.0 which is the latest and as you can see it has the updated oled screen uh, which is nice and easy to navigate and you can see it shows you your packet rates firmware upgrade uh, binding mode telemetry tx power um, packet etc etc really cool the TX power you can change it from here uh, switch between 25 50 100 250 500 and 1000 do you need the one water or do you need the 500 well I suppose if you're flying in some denser conditions buildings etc I think the one what's going to be the go for you Speed now and power. you or if you certainly like to push that long range like me uh, the one water is going to be the go absolutely rather than the 500 water but if you're just scooting around the backyard, you're not too fussed about 
you know, how far you go or what you're going through and you're just flying line of sight then the 500 is going to be ample um, I haven't I've heard a few rumors about the one watt system and you know we're talking many 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 kilometers of distance without any breakup so that's it in a nutshell guys much easier easier interface don't forget to upgrade the firmware I'm just going to quickly jump over to the PC now and show you guys how to change your switches on the rear here and upgrade the firmware to the latest version and where to go to do that okay off to the PC so the first thing you're going to need to do guys to upgrade your firmware to the latest version 2.2.0 is obviously plug in your USB-C I won't plug it into the PC yet now go to the rear here and you need to take a close look at your seven switches here these all need to be in a certain position otherwise your firmware simply will not upgrade and you'll have all sorts of trouble so we shall name the switches from left to right one two three four five six seven nice and simple there are numbers underneath so to upgrade the firmware your dip switch number one and two they both need to be down on the on position your dip switch number three and four need to be off which is in the up position and your dip switch number five six and seven need to be off as well which is up i will leave a little picture on the screen there so you guys can have a read of that as well make sure those switches are in that position and then we'll jump over to the configurator and we shall do our flashing let's go so make sure you have downloaded the latest version of the express lrs configurator uh, at the time of recording this it was version 1.3.8 which is up on the screen here once you have opened this up you'll be presented with this screen it's quite simply a matter of going down to target selecting your beta fpv 2.4 gig that is assuming you are running 2.4 if you're not select the appropriate one go down to device and select the 2.4 micro 1000 milliwatt and as you can see 2.2.0 is already selected make sure you have your uart selected which is basically updating through your usb uh, let me know if your usb has trouble recognizing it you may need to download a beta FPV driver. Double check your settings down here. Uh, regulatory domain should be selected. Uh, I had, I'm not using a binding phrase. I'm just running all of mine without a phrase. Um, I don't fly with anybody else using beta FPV, so it's not an issue for me uh, for binding. So I'm just running that with no phrase. Um, you are inverted on. Uh, feature open. TX is on and auto Wi-Fi on don't really need to touch any of those now if you want to see if your module is connected just click on down here and you should have a pop-up that pops up underneath so I'm on COM5 Silicon Lab so that's my USB um, dash driver that I'm utilizing so my PC has recognized the TX module so all we do now is build and flash it will take some time to do if you're running it for the first time However, once you hit that build and flash, I won't do it as I've already done it. I will actually start the process and then I'll stop it. <laughs> once you've done the build and flash, you'll get a nice green success screen up and everything will be hunky-dory. You'll be on the new firmware 2.2.0 and ready to fly. Okay, let's go back to the bench top. Once you've successfully flashed it to the latest version, make sure you put your switches back to where they are meant to be otherwise when you plug it into your uh, radio it's not going to work so operating mode is the dip switch one and two in the off position switch three and four are on the down position and dip switch five six seven are on the off position make sure that is correct otherwise it's not going to work in your radio there you go guys beta fpv micro rx module one water 2.4 gig so once you've updated everything, assuming you have already set up your radio, it's basically it's basically running the Crossfire protocol. So whatever you're using with Crossfire before, you know, if you're using something like the TBS 
on the rear it's basically exactly the same settings you don't need to touch anything which is why this system is really good I've got my own Beta FPV logo screen here for using this equipment. Uh, binding it couldn't be easier. I've got the ELRS uh, nano receiver in here. Make sure you turn your binding protocol on on your, on your receiver. Um, check out my other videos if you need to learn how to do that. Once you're in bind mode, it's simply a matter of going to the rear of the screen, scrolling, finding your bind mode, uh, selecting your bind mode and it's as simple as that guys it is bound just like that and you're good to fly really really simple um, the hardest thing is just getting that correct information for upgrading the firmware as I said our crossfire protocol really cool I must admit I have flown this gear already a little bit because I do like to test this equipment out before I do any reviews and I have to say uh, I'm really impressed so check out my other videos of the Beta FPV gear. Beta FPV ELRS. Let us know in the comments, guys, what you think. I will be letting you know now I'm doing a giveaway of my 500 milliwatt module. And I'm also going to do a giveaway uh, including the Light Radio 2 SE. So stay tuned for that. Smash that bell and subscribe icon so that you don't miss that announcement coming up in the next couple of days otherwise thumbs up if you got something from this video and i'll see you next time